Hey, what is going on guys? Rudalanel here, coming back at you with some more Python tutorials, and I'm gonna get started teaching you guys some GTK. Alright, now, this is kind of a big topic, so I'll start by introducing what GTK really is. Now, GTK, um, it's actually called a GIMP Toolkit, and it's a multi-platform toolkit for creating graphical user interfaces or, like, windowing systems, so your programs aren't limited to, like, the console or the black box or whatever emulator shell you've set up, but your programs can have an interface. You can click buttons, you can drag things and move them around, and it's it's fancy. It, it looks good. It's the way that a normal... I, I don't want to say normal, but a, a typical average computer user would be working with. They typically aren't on the command line or the shell or the console. So as to make things easier for our users and probably to make things easier for us as the programmers just so our design and our layout of our logic is clear to us we can use a graphical user interface it's not just blank text in a console or a shell now gtk is called gimp toolkit gimp is an acronym for G, uh, GNU Image Manipulation Program, or something. Image Manipulation Protocol, it, it's one of those things. And GNU is a recursive acronym for GNU's not Unix. So it's like upon a, acronym upon acronym upon recursive acronym, and it's like this huge acronym fluster cuck. But we don't need to know any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump right into things. Now, the module is called GTK, and um, it might be advisable for you to create a folder so you'll uh, have a space where you're working with all the things that we create in this, uh, in this series. Mine is under Python, and I'm going to call mine GTK Endeavor, and my file is just going to be called main for now. All right, now we're going to need our shebang line. We always need that. And I'm going to actually do, I'm going to set mine up, my script up, with object-oriented stuff. So I'm going to create a class, I'll call mine base, set up my constructor, and we'll uh, get the ball rolling. If you guys don't understand anything that I, that I ever do in any of my tutorials, you know, of course you can ask me. What the heck am I doing all this stuff for? Or you could look at some of my older videos on like the the language of Python, the syntax, and everything. I do have I do have a series on Python, the language itself, not just this module. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't. But all right, we're ready to get started. We're obviously going to want to import GTK. That's that's a big thing. Now we need an object because. We need, we need to create some objects and some variables because what I want to do for this video, for this portion of the tutorial, I just want to create a basic, really, really simple window. We're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to kind of explore what do we need to do in GTK to make the simplest thing we can a freaking window. All right. So we need a variable to store or work as an object for. So I'll just call mine window. And I'm going to set that equal to, I'm going to use GTK, which is the name of the module. Now... Note that I'm not using from GTK import everything, because that will change the scope of all the functions and variables inside the module. I'm just going to use GTK, so I have to use the name of the module and the dot selector. Now to create a window, we're going to type in window. And note that I have a capital W here. If we're going to ever be creating any sort of element or anything as part of the GTK's windowing system, like maybe a table or a box or a button or a, a, a label, that sort of thing, they're all typically going to have the style of the GTK dot and the name of the item or the elements with a capital letter. So GTK window. Now, you can pass in arguments to this function, or the constructor for the object, and you can determine what kind of window it is. For now, I'm going to leave this blank. We'll get into more of that stuff later. Alright. Now, there's our window. It's, it's done. We just created it. So, what we want to do is select window.show, and that's a function that's local to the object to actually display it. And what we want to do is we want to type in gtk.main. Now, main is the actual loop of the of GTK. What it does is it keeps the windowing system alive. It like keeps running the loop over and over and over again until the GTK needs to close or quit. So that is mandatory in just about everything that we do. GTK.main. And it, it should typically be the last thing that we write. It's going to be the last of all of our work. 
So for potty words and giggles, let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm going to create a new terminal and I'll hop on over to that directory. CD Python, CD GTK Endeavor. Now I know main is in there, so I'm going to make it executable. I'm going to go ahead and run that script. Oh, main is not defined. Oh, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm dumb. Root is a base. We have to create an object of the actual class. That's pretty embarrassing. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so used to, like, procedural programming, I didn't even catch that. All right, easy fix. Run it. And you can see I've got this little window that popped up. The title is main.python. It's kind of small, and I got a warning that GTK couldn't find a theme. Okay, that's no big deal. I don't have to worry about that. But if I go ahead and close the window... All right, the, uh, the window closes, but my script is still running. I, my terminal is still there. I, all right, that's not what I wanted. I want to just end the end the program. When I close the window, the program should close, right? That's how logically things should work. Well, we need to actually set that up. Now, our window, the object or that GTK item or element, that can be attached to certain signals, and signals are the key words here. A signal is any sort of interaction, whatever happens to the object. So, what we do to sort of access and change what happens when we see these signals, what we're going to do is connect, uh, is to uh, type in, or the function that we run, is window.connect. Connect Connect is the function that you need to know. Now, it's going to pass in, it's going to take some arguments, and the first one is a string of the specific signal. Now, to close the window, which we just did, it's destroy. And now the next argument is actually what happens, or the function that will run, when that signal is sent. Now, we can type in exit. Now, we're not going to use our parentheses here, because it just wants the name of the function. We're not actually calling the function, we just want GTK to know this is what we want to happen when this signal is called. In our case, destroy. So let's go ahead and try this. Get my terminal open, run this, GTK. Here's our little window. Go ahead and close this. And now we can see that it, that it closed. The program stopped running, but we were returned, or at least it like displayed out, the object of the, the window. Why did it do that? I mean, it's giving us like the memory address and everything. It's just telling us all about the object. Well, I'm sure you guys know that the exit function does take a return code. And logically, the next couple of arguments for this connect function are any parameters that we want to be passed to this function. But, of course, it's going to have to pass in the specific widget, or the item or the element that we're actually working with. So it's just going to tell us the information about the window, if we were to use this exit function. So, maybe it's not the best idea, because we can't really just say we want to send in zero because as a return status, because remember, it's always going to be sending in the actual widget, or the item. So, exit isn't going to work for us. What we can do, however, is use gtk.main underscore quit. Now, gtk obviously has a main loop. It's going to keep the window alive, keep the program running for as long as we need to. And then once it quits, it's done running gtk. It doesn't have to loop anymore, and it'll continue with the procedural code. So anything that would come after this would run. But in our case, since we don't have anything it will just close the program because there's nothing left for it to run. Let's go ahead and try this now. If I run this, you can see my window. I'll close it, and no new messages, no any standard output or anything, no object, anything. It, it, it's done, it's clear, and the program closed. And of course, I want to show you some guy, something interesting. If I can just print out, that's all, folks. Or anything silly or cheesy, I don't care. If I were to run this, you can see that my window is open and there's no output of that's all, folks. But once we close GTK, once the window has been closed, it'll go ahead and write that's all, folks, because it's happening after our main loop. All right. So I think that's all I want to cover for now. This is just a very, very simple beginning. Here's how you create a window and, uh, and all that. So... I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, ho I hope you're excited about learning all about GTK. Uh, I hope I can do a good job with the series. And uh, let me know if you're into this. Give, leave, leave me a like, maybe comment, maybe subscribe. It's whatever you want to do, guys. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.